Okay, in today's video, as you can see, I am going to be going over AC power for RC circuits, and this is how we're going to do that. We have a 150 ohm resistor, and we have a 15 microfarad capacitor in this circuit, and they're placed in series. They're placed in series, and they're connected to a 250 volt AC voltage source, and the voltage source has a frequency of 55 hertz and hopefully in 10 minutes or less maybe a little longer we're going to do the following i think it's five things we're going to determine the circuit impedance we're going to determine the armist current through the circuit we're going to determine the power factor and the impedance phase angle the phase angle for that circuit and we're going to determine the real power the reactive power and we're going to draw the power triangle and determine the parent power consumed by the circuit so let's just get started with that no reason to waste time here Okay, we're going to determine the circuit impedance. Here is the circuit uh, diagram, and here are the, here is the information that we were given on the previous slide. As you know, to calculate the circuit impedance, you're just going to use the impedance equation, which is Z equals the square root of R squared plus the capacitive reactance XC squared. Now, you'll notice we know the capacitance, but we don't know the capacitive reactance. We're going to calculate the capacitive reactance first. And we're going to do that like this. Here's the capacitive reactance is 1 over... 2 times pi times the frequency times the capacitance of the capacitor. And we just plug those values in like that. 1 over 2 times pi times 55 times 15 times 10 to the minus 6 farads, because this says microfarads, 15 microfarads. Far micro is 10 to the minus 6. Simply calculate that, and you get that the capacitive reactance is 193 ohms. Okay, now we know R. And we know Xc, the capacitive reactance, the resistance of capacitive reactance. We just take Z is the square root of 150 squared plus 93 squared, 193 squared, actually. And you get that the impedance of that circuit is 244 ohms. All right. So we did letter A. We did the impedance. Okay, now we're going to determine the RMS current through the circuit. And uh, we have our impedance there. We just use Ohm's law of V equals I times R, but when we have an AC circuit, we put V equals I times Z because we put the impedance in there because the impedance for AC circuits is the sum of all the resistances and reactances, which we calculated that sum on the previous slide, 244 ohms. And I put the equation here with RMS because when we, we wanted the RMS uh, current, so we need to use the RMS voltage. Now, we don't know the RMS voltage. This is the voltage source. That's the maximum voltage. So we need to calculate the RMS voltage first. That's simple. That's just the uh, RMS voltage is equal to the maximum voltage divided by the square root of 2. And that gives us that the RMS voltage is 230 volts divided by the square root of 2, which is 193 volts. Okay, now we can calculate the RMS current. The root mean squared current is just the voltage, which we just calculated, 163 divided by 244. That is the impedance and we get that the RMS current is 0 0.67 amperes. So that's the impedance and the current. And now we're going to get the power factor and the phase angle for the circuit. Now the power factor, now this is all just based on the, the um, impedance triangle or the power triangle. So you can use the cosine, the sine, or the tangent. I think typically it's done with the cosine of the angle. So the cosine of the angle, if you uh, remember what the impedance triangle looks like, the uh, uh, cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the adjacent is the resistance, and the hypotenuse, which is the impedance of the impedance triangle. So we just use R times Z, excuse me, R divided by Z. Of course, you could use the sine of the, or the, uh, the tangent to do this. You'll come out with the same answer, and sometimes it's often good to do it and just check it. It will come out with the same angle, um, but we're going to use the cosine. We know R. We know Z, so it's just the cosine of R divided by Z, and um, or the cosine is equal to R divided by Z, which is 150 divided by 244, and you get that the power factor is 0 0.615 or 61.5%. So that's the power factor for that um, circuit. And I'll make another video soon describing what the power factor is. That's very interesting. Also. Um, so you can look for that. Now, if we want to calculate the phase angle, um, then we can just use that same equation. And we know now that the cosine of the phase angle, phi, this is the symbol for the phase angle um, that's used. 
And so we can calculate that the phase angle, we know it is an angle that has a cosine of 0 0.615, which is 52 degrees. And like I said, if you go through and you use the sine or the tangent, because um, you can figure those things out also, um, you'll get the same answer in all three cases, all right? Okay, uh, let's see, that was C. Now we're going to go and do D, which D was, oh, we're gonna determine the real power and the reactive power for this circuit. So we're gonna determine the real power using our power equation, which is power is the voltage RMS times the current RMS. When we're talking about power, we always use the RMS currents and voltages, and that's times the cosine of the phase angle. And then we can t get the reactive power using V times R, V times I times the sine of, uh, of the phase angle. And we just plug the values in and you get that it's a 163 volts times 0 0.67 ampere times the cosine of 52. And you get that the real power for that circuit is 67 watts. Now, when we do the uh, reactive power, we use a symbol Q just to complicate things a little bit. And then we say V times I times the sine of the angle. And we put that values in and we get 86 VAR. Now, I just want to point out that this watt and this voltage ampere R are the same thing. This uh, VA is the equivalent of a volt, uh, excuse me, of a watt. So this unit and this unit are equivalent. And then we just put an R here next to it because we know that that is to designate that that's the reactive power. Okay. So it's just kind of a notation. But this unit VA and the watt are the same unit. And you can actually check that too if you want, if you can kind of derive a watt out of that. Okay, joule second, joules per second, excuse me. Okay, so that's letter D. And now we can go through and we can do the last thing. We're gonna get we're gonna draw the power triangle, kind of using the same conventions we do when we draw the impedance triangle, and we're gonna calculate the um, apparent power. Now you don't actually have to draw the power triangle. I think it's a good kind of uh, visual to see how it all works and how it works out. But you can also, if you know the equation, which we'll show you the equation because it's just the Pythagorean theorem. Also, that's like we did with the impedance. Uh, you can calculate the power, the apparent power without drawing the triangle, but we draw the triangle like this. We put the power, the, um, the real power on the x-axis, just like we put the resistance on the x-axis, and then uh, we this is a capacitor circuit or the circuit with a capacitor in it. So we draw the uh, reactive power on the negative y-axis, just like we draw the capacitive reactance on the negative y-axis by convention, because they're 90 uh, degrees behind each other, or, or the or the current leads the voltage by 90 degrees, and let's see. Then we have uh, those two values drawn like that, and then uh, we can move this over because we're going to add these up uh, vectorially. So we have the power, uh, the real power, and the reactive power, and the apparent power is represented by the hypotenuse of that right triangle, and the angle phi is the same angle you get which we calculated earlier, but it's the, it's the same angle you get if you were to use the, um, the for the impedance triangle. Okay, so you get it a bunch of different ways. Uh, so let's see, now we're just going to calculate S. We have a right triangle, we just use the Pythagorean theorem. S is equal to the square root of P squared plus Q squared. And that means that S is equal to the square root of 67 squared plus 86 squared, which means that the apparent power consumed by that circuit is 109 and now you can see we use this VA again without the R if we leave it R that tells us it's the apparent power but once again this is the same thing as a watt um, and that's that's the apparent power now you can also calculate the apparent power simply by the RMS voltage times the RMS current so you can just do that also um, and you'll get the same answer multiply 163 times 0 0.67 and you also get 109 volt amperes like that okay and then uh, just to check, we can see we get the same angle. We're going to calculate the, that angle phi using our, um, our power values, and it's just Q. That would be this is for this angle. I chose the tangent here. This is usually done by tangent, but once again, you can do it with the sine, the cosine, or the tangent. You get the same answer. The tangent of this angle is Q because the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent, opposite over adjacent. You just divide by one, uh, excuse me, 86 divided by 67. And you get, once again, that that angle is equal to 52 degrees. So you, you can do it a bunch of different ways. It's good to check it. Do it a couple different ways. Check it out. See if it matches what you got for your impedance triangle also. Okay. 
So there you go. That's it. We did all of that stuff, all five of those things. I hope that was 10 minutes or less. But thank you very much for watching. Hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following four things. You should subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. You should give me a thumbs up for this video. You should leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget that sharing is caring. You should share this video with all of your friends. Show them how much you care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.